Hello, library friends. So glad you could join us for story time today. We are going to start off today with a song, a counting song, and it's one that I learned when I was a little girl from Sesame Street. It's a counting song, and it's going to give you a little clue about what our story today is going to be about. What do you see? That's right, ladybugs. And how many are there? One, two, three. So this song is gonna be about counting ladybugs. And not just three. We're gonna count way higher than that. We're gonna count higher than you have fingers. We are gonna need so many ladybugs. Look at all those ladybugs. Let's count them. See how many they are. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have a suspicion those ladybugs are going on a picnic. So with the song we're going to sing is called Ladybugs Picnic. And like I said, I learned it when I was a little girl and it was on Sesame Street, but it is also on this fabulous Elizabeth Mitchell CD that you can check out from the library. We have lots of her CDs. She does great kids music. So uh, the one with Ladybug's Picnic on it is called You Are My Sunshine. We've also got You Are My Little Bird, Sunny Day, and blue clouds. So I highly recommend checking out any of those CDs from the library once we've sung this song and you know it a little. All right, here we go. We're going to count again while we sing. Song goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ladybugs came to the ladybugs picnic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And they all played games at the ladybugs picnic. They had twelve sacks, so they ran sack races. They fell on their backs and they fell on their faces. The ladybugs twelve at the ladybugs picnic. They played jump rope, but the rope it broke. So they just sat around play it, telling knock knock jokes. Ladybugs twelve. At the ladybugs picnic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ladybugs came to the ladybugs picnic. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve! At the ladybugs picnic. Oh, that was great. Thanks for helping me count those ladybugs. Why do you think I thought of ladybugs and the ladybug picnic song for our story today? You're right. If you guessed it was about bugs, that I brought a book about bugs, you are very right. We are going to share <clears throat> this book called A Beetle is Shy. And that's because ladybugs are actually, their whole name is the ladybug beetle or ladybird beetle is what they call them in England. Look at all those different kinds of beetles. I see our friend ladybug right there. One, two, three, four. Four ladybugs on the cover of this book, but I betcha we'll see more than four ladybugs while we read. And there are so many kinds of beetles. All different colors. I see blue with orange legs. Oh, and this one has stripes, red and blue stripes on a green background. And that one's got kind of blue and yellow spots. Very beautiful. A beetle is shy. 
This is by Diana Hutz Aston, and the illustrations, all those fabulous pictures of the different kinds of beetles, are drawn and painted by Sylvia Long. We are sharing this book today courtesy of Chronicle Kids. The inside is spotted just like that ladybug. Oh, and there's even more beetles. Look at all of them. <clears throat> oh, here's one with a green shell with a, like an orange cape. He looks kind of like a superhero beetle, doesn't he? And he's got a big horn coming out of the top of his head. Purple spotted beetle. There's one striped like a bee. So many different kinds. Have you ever seen a beetle maybe in your yard or at the park? Maybe you'll, maybe a good thing to do on a beautiful day would be good to go on a beetle hunt after we're done reading this, okay? Oh my, look at that. That beetle has humongous horns, doesn't he? And this one has all kind of feathery horns. And that's exactly what he's called. It's a feather horned beetle. A beetle is shy. A beetle is shy. It begins its life inside an egg. Soft and wingless, tender protected by the roots of trees and the undersides of leaves. There's the egg case. It says it's the egg case of a spotted tortoise beetle. Tucked up under that leaf, all safe and cozy. The egg hatches into a wriggling larvae that feasts on plant and animal matter and it grows quickly. It sheds its outer skin, its hard outer skin or exoskeleton many times as it gets bigger. So we start out with the eggs and after six to seven days, they hatch out into one shape of larvae. And then five to seven days later, they change a little more, a little more, a little more. And then the larvae begins its transformation into a cocoon-like pupa, where it develops wings and antennae. Finally, after even more time, a beetle twists and turns and squirms free of the pupa's leathery skin and its body and true colors emerge. There we go. This one is called a convergent lady beetle. A beetle is kaleidoscopic. Have you ever looked through a kaleidoscope and seen all the different colors and patterns and twirled the kaleidoscope a little bit so all of the colors change and make new and different patterns. That's kind of what this looks like, isn't it? Like half of a kaleidoscope. And if we turned it, there'd be totally different beetles and colors. Part of what I love about this book is that it tells us the names of all the beetles in it. So this one is called a dead nettle leaf beetle. This one is an emerald ash borer. That one is one that we are having a hard time with um, <clears throat> because it likes to eat ash trees. And lots of cities have ash trees planted in the boulevards along the street. But the emerald ash borer comes and eats the tree and makes it weak and it dies. So sometimes beetles are helpful and good, like ladybugs eat aphids on our plants, so they're a good beetle to have in the garden. And sometimes beetles act in ways we don't want them to, like this emerald ash borer. I love how shimmery some of them are, rainbow colored. 
A beetle is colossal. Look how big that beetle is. He is six and a half inches long. So just as long as my hand. Can you imagine seeing a bug that big? That's a little crazy. That is a titan beetle, one of the largest insects in the world. He has mandibles, which is another word for your jaw, a jaw powerful enough to snap a pencil in half. Ooh, there they are. Those look wicked. I would not poke my fingers near that beetle. He might think it was a pencil. So some beetles are giant, colossal, and some beetles are microscopic. So this beetle is so tiny, you can only see him by looking through a microscope, which has a lens in it, kind of like the lens of people's glasses. Uh, it has a lens that makes things look bigger because he's really super tiny. Look, the eye of a needle. We could fit three or four of that beetle through the eye of the needle. It says he's the smallest beetle and one of the smallest insects in the world is the North American featherwing beetle. So tiny, it could easily slip through the eye of a needle. <clears throat> a beetle is tasty. Beetles are found on every continent all around the world except Antarctica. Because they're so plentiful and also protein rich, they are eaten by humans all around the world. In India, they eat stag beetle chutney. That's this country right here, way around the world from us. This shows the other side of the world, the side that we're not on. <clears throat> In Vietnam, this pink country, they eat coconut tree beetle larvae soup. In Thailand, they eat wok fried dung beetle. Papua New Guinea eats roasted palm weevil larva. And in Australia, which is where the kangaroos and koala bears live, they eat roasted longhorn beetle larvae. And it says in the United States where we live, you can snack on mealworm ice cream. And in the Netherlands, you can try chocolate infused with mealworms. Would you eat mealworm ice cream? I don't know. There must be something to it because apparently across the whole world, lots of people think that a beetle is tasty. A beetle is a digger. Some have legs that are wide and jagged for digging. Dung beetles are like bulldozers, rolling marble-sized balls of animal waste and burying them underground or on top of dung heaps. Some beetles are runners, the green trigger beetle. <clears throat> they have long slender legs made for speed. The tiger beetle runs up to two feet a second. At that rate, this Olympian of the insect world can run 50 yards in just over a minute. Pretty, pretty good for such a tiny beetle. Some beetles are hoppers. Here's one. This one is a pigweed flea beetle. Flea beetles use their toes to catapult themselves about 13 inches high. Or a beetle can be a swimmer. Aquatic beetles seek meals of algae, insects, worms, tadpoles, and even small fish. Some have flattened legs that they use for paddles for swimming, and others glide like sailboats on top of ponds and lakes, or they speed beneath the surface 
as if they were skating on glass ceilings. Sounds like beetles can do all the things that we can do. They can dig and run and hop and swim. A beetle is telegraphic. It says beetles send messages to each other using chemicals called pheromones. The smell of pheromones acts as a code that tells beetles where to find other beetles or food. Other beetles talk to each other with squeaky raspy sounds made by scraping their wings against their bodies. I bet you you've heard crickets do that kind of thing and some beetles can do that. And look, here's one that I see in my yard this time of year, blinking on and off. Maybe you have them in your yard too. Fireflies communicate by bioluminescence or glowing lights. They flash signals to attract a mate or defend their territory or warn away things that might want to eat them. <clears throat> A beetle is guarded. This talks about all the different ways that beetles have to stay safe. Sometimes their shape and color helps them stay safe. Like here on this acorn, you can barely see that acorn weevil because he's the same color and kind of bumpiness. He's camouflaged on that acorn. Some beetles protect themselves by letting off a stinky, icky liquid that tastes bad or gives you a tummy ache. So the blister beetle, which is what we have here, secretes a toxin that burns the skin and causes swelling. Hmm, that sounds like one we don't want to pick up. There are also aero poison beetles that some people have used the juice of beetles on the tips of arrows to kill bigger animals when they're hunting. And beetles also protect themselves by pretending to be someone else. That's called mimicry. I think we talked about this one, how it was black and yellow striped like a bee or a wasp. Since it's the same colors as a wasp, enemies maybe stay away from it because they think it's a wasp. This kind of beetle, the bombardier beetle, lets out a hot, uh, hot spray of stuff that uh, stings the eyes and uh, confuses its enemies. A beetle is helpful. Here's our lady beetle again. Lady beetles, also known as ladybugs or ladybird beetles, and soldier beetles help keep plants healthy by eating aphids. There we go, our lady beetle and a soldier beetle. So a beetle is helpful in some instances or harmful like we talked about with that um, <clears throat> emerald ash borer. This is a boll weevil who likes to live on cotton, which is what your clothes are made out of a lot of times, and it eats up the cotton, so it's not helpful. This is a striped cucumber beetle. Can you guess what he eats? That's right, cucumber leaves. And here's a spider beetle. That one, it looks like, is destroying somebody's rug. So sometimes beetles like to eat our clothes. A beetle is prehistoric. Here's some beetles that are, are no longer alive a long time ago. They got trapped in some sap from a tree. <clears throat> 
which dried out and became amber. It got all fossilized so we can see what kind of beetles lived a long, long time ago. A beetle is armored. This is a red speckled jewel beetle. And it says, <clears throat> nearly half of all of the more than one million kinds of insects on Earth are beetles. Unlike other winged insects, beetles have a pair of hard outer wings called elytra that shield their inner delicate flight wings against heat, rain, and hungry predators. A beetle is shy. There's the spotted tortoise beetle pupa. It's a newborn, soft and hungry, hurrying to seal itself in a cocoon where it can be still and cozy until it becomes what it was meant to be. And then a beetle is bold. Oh my goodness, that pupae, which is just yellow and black when it goes into the cocoon, comes out yellow and black and blue and white, all spotted, very beautiful, bright, bold colors. And there we go. The same frontispiece with all of the beetles named. There's that blister beetle, the emerald ash borer. There's the giant titan beetle. And there's our convergent lady beetle. The end. A beetle is shy. So many different kinds of beetles. I learned lots of stuff reading that book to you. Lots of stuff I didn't know about beetles. All right, friends, after hearing that fun story about all the many things that beetles are, we have just enough time to play a hide and seek game with a ladybug. <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of different colored rugs here on our flannel board and Ladybug is going to hide behind one of them and you have to help me find her. Let's see, we've got lots of different colors. We've got a blue rug and a dark red one, a gray rug, a pink rug, orange and yellow. Which one do you think she's behind? Okay, let's try this one first. We're gonna call Ladybug, Ladybug, are you behind the dark red rug? No, Ladybug. Okay, let's try the pink one next. Ladybug, Ladybug, are you behind the pink rug? Still no ladybug. <clears throat> the yellow one? Okay, let's try the yellow one next. Ladybug, ladybug, are you behind the yellow rug? No ladybug. How about the gray one? She's gotta be under there. That's the biggest, longest one. Ladybug. Ladybug, are you behind the gray rug? There she is. We found her. All right. Thanks for playing hide and seek with the with Ladybug and me. This is a fun game that you could play yourself at home if you don't have a flannel board. <clears throat> you could play this as a tabletop game, maybe with your brothers and sisters or with your grown-up because you could probably draw 
a whole bunch of different colored rugs, and then you could even make them have patterns, like you could put flowers on one and stripes on another, or maybe polka dots like our ladybug has. So if you draw a ladybug and a whole bunch of rugs for her to hide behind, that's a super fun game that you can try at home until we can meet again at the library for story time. Thanks for helping me find that sneaky ladybug. I think we are gonna let her take a little nap underneath the rug here. And I am gonna say goodbye, library friends. Thanks for coming to Storytime this week, and we'll see you again next week.